Today, more and more objects have network connectivity, allowing them to send and receive data. This is the case with many everyday household appliances, from a refrigerator to your smart TV. It's also the case with your car. Smart cars rely on the collection, use and processing of data from different sources, including the driver, the vehicle itself and its surroundings. Most vehicle data are of a technical nature. They exist only momentarily and are never stored. The rest of the data can potentially be put to a wide variety of uses. For instance, to advise the driver on the easiest and safest routes, to automatically pay for parking or tolls, to contact emergency services in case of an accident, to predict when the vehicle will need maintenance or repair, and to provide local information, entertainment and other services. To enable all of this to happen, we will need seamless communications networks to transmit the data. Networks that provide full coverage with low latency and enough bandwidth to process data for millions of cars. The advantage of mobile communications is that the infrastructure already exists. However, investments have mainly occurred in urban areas where people live. We now also need strong investments in digital highways to get connectivity where people drive. To that end, Europe will need to strengthen its communications networks to improve coverage and reliability. But with the development of the Internet of Things, people can have genuine concerns about the protection of personal data and privacy. At the same time, however, more and more people are willing to share data with service providers if it means they can benefit from useful services. Data protection is an issue automakers take very seriously. The automobile industry is committed to providing its customers with a high level of data protection and maintaining their trust. The bottom line of the auto industry's data protection commitment is that personal data will be shared with third parties only on the basis of a contract, with the consent of the consumer, or to comply with legal obligations. The big question is what is the best means of providing safe and secure access to this data for third parties? On the one hand, some parties are calling for direct access to the data in the vehicle. But this would facilitate hacker attacks, since every new external data interface increases the number of potential targets and entry points. Additional safety risks in terms of driver distraction could arise if external parties are granted uncontrolled access to the vehicle's onboard systems. A car is not a smartphone on wheels nor is it a PC that can be rebooted if a problem occurs while driving. A car requires much higher standards in safety, security and privacy. To limit the risks, a better and more balanced alternative to direct in-vehicle data access would be off-board access. This would allow vehicle manufacturers to communicate the relevant vehicle data in a secure manner to an external server, from where third parties can access it. In addition to this external server, managed by the vehicle manufacturer, one or more neutral servers would be installed. These servers would be totally neutral. They would neither be operated nor financed by the manufacturers. This would facilitate data access, in particular for SMEs, by offering multi-brand data on one server, rather than obliging them to use multiple servers of individual manufacturers. Offboard data access would provide an open yet protected interface for the provision of services by third parties, contributing to innovation and allowing for customer choice and fair and open competition. The increasing ability of cars to exchange data with the outside world holds great potential to revolutionize the driving experience. But to benefit from this, we need to further strengthen Europe's connectivity infrastructure, protect vehicle data, and facilitate safe and secure third-party access to data.